It's three in the morning on a cold, high up Santa Teresa Hill in South San Jose. Under my boots crunched the gravel and the rocks of the trail that we had been on for 11 miles. 34 people who do not know each other and had never met are all each wearing 40 pound backpacks and we are being led by a United States Green Beret. Unknown distance, unknown time. That is the great challenge. Our team had been at it for many hours, eight hours. For 11 miles, we've been hauling railroad ties and logs and up to 800 pounds of rocks and all these sandbags. Each person had a sandbag of 20 to 30 pounds in addition to their backpack. What was the turning point? What did we need? We needed teamwork. And that was the turning point for that event. All 34 of us finished class 3001 of the Gerwak event, and each one of us were handed a patch like this by Green Beret. In today's talk, I'm going to speak about challenges and turning points. So what is a challenge? It's a difficulty. It's something that's hard. Some of us seek out challenges by choice. Brian, as you uh, could hear, uh, definitely sought out things for the story. Some of us challenges happen to us. There's a famous quote that says, life is what happens to you when you are busy making other plans. John Lennon said that. In any case, we need to embrace the challenge that we face. Pema Chodron said, lean into life's sharp points. The challenge of education. Now I know for you here at Southport, what that means is another big test from Miss Rollins, right? Yeah. But what I'm going to talk about is the challenge of education. See, as it is, a lot of people who go to university and college, they seek further education. And the old way of college is you had to go somewhere, live there, and do your studies. You'd go to libraries, look things up, write your paper, submit it. But that's not how college and universities work in 2019, 2020, and going forward. What college is today, and the challenge of education, is that people are on the move. College and university is dynamic. People travel. There's internships in other countries. There's actually college courses on the water, on a boat, 600 students at once traveling to several ports. College is very different. University is very different now than it was 100 or even 50 years ago. So what's the turning point in the challenge of education? For me, it's online learning. I am currently enrolled in the University of Minnesota in Crookston. Crookston is a wonderful but very small town in northern Minnesota. But I'm taking my courses online. As you can see here, my schedule, it shows the classes I'm taking in a wonderful portal called Canvas. That is how technology is being used at the turning point of the challenge of education. Canvas shows me everything about my classes, who the instructors are, could be Dr. Craig Miller or Dr. Sylvia Preston, both instructors in my courses right now. It shows me all assignments that are due, when they're due, and all I do is click on links and the assignment launches and I begin to do the work. That's online learning. Here's some amazing facts about that. In fact, one in three college students who are in school, enrolled right now, one of their classes is online. So while three, four, five days a week they are going to university classes, one of them, they don't need to go from where they live to the university campus at all. That's the turning point in the challenge of education. Next, I want to move on to the challenge of securing the internet and protecting computers. Now, what that really should say is protecting devices because it's not this anymore. How many of you here have actually used a payphone? Oh, some hands. That's, that's a bit of a surprise. But this was technology not too long ago. Cameras that had film in it and phones, you, you didn't carry phones on you. You actually said, hey, where's the nearest payphone? And you'd use quarters and drop it into there. But what is the technology now? And what is the challenge with that technology? The technology now is we have 
laptops and computers in our homes. We have phones and tablets, and we take pictures and upload content all of the time. The stream of content going up into the internet. And how do we secure that? How do we keep that data safe? What's the turning point here in the challenge of protecting the internet and protecting devices? Well, one thing we realized in this turning point was data is in one of two states. Data is either at rest or it's in flight. You can see on the left somebody trying to get data off of a hard drive or a component that was in a laptop. If you do not take care of your hardware properly, that information is still on it. Matter of fact, my daughter, who's in the same grade as you guys, she wanted to buy a Nintendo DS, okay? We bought it from somebody over the internet. It was shipped to us on time, it worked, it could charge, but the odd thing I found is that there were pictures in the Nintendo DS, pictures that had been left there. My wife, who had done the transaction, sent the email back to the person who had previously owned it to let them know that we found the data and I did a factory reset on it so that we, nobody could view their information. That's an example of data that's at rest and protecting it. Data in flight, that's the other way it's in motion. The other thing we learned, another turning point, is that an attack or a threat can come from anywhere on planet Earth. Similar to the challenge of education and going to online learning, with protecting computers and the internet, those attacks can come from anywhere. Another thing to be aware of, you guys, is that attacks can be already loaded onto something that we use. You may share a flash drive with somebody, and in most cases, the flash drives you exchange or the files you exchange are, very, are likely to be safe. However, things from outside your sphere of influence, outside of those you know, you should be careful with those devices. Now let's take a quick look at something you may be familiar with. It was introduced in a presentation earlier, Snapchat. So a lot of us who use social media, it could be Snapchat, it could be Instagram, it could be texting. This is how it works, right? It works like this. You take it and send it. Actually, I wanted to briefly show you guys a possible model of how it really works. And it is a very complex, interconnected, system of networks. Now this by no means is completely accurate. I don't work at Snapchat or Instagram, but this is a model in my mind of the sender and the recipient and all of the steps in between. So remember, data is at rest or in flight. There are several points on this diagram where the data would be at rest on either of the phones. When the data is in flight, it's traveling through the networks. So how do we protect that? And here's where you guys can help. There's an evolving landscape with protecting the internet and securing computers. The amazing thing is that today, this year, in 2019, two million InfoSec jobs, information security jobs, will go unfilled. Of all of those people doing InfoSec work, protecting networks, protecting computers, threat analysis, hacking, Less than 25% are women. So I ask and challenge young ladies in the audience here today to consider a career in InfoSec, a career of coding and programming, developing, developing strong networks and computer systems that protect the data at rest and protect the data in flight. Some example companies that do this now, McAfee, CrowdStrike, Forescout, those are example companies. There's also Jumio, which does an identity and access management. They actually have a product where it takes a 3D selfie of you, multiple points in the face, and compares that with the picture on your ID, verifying with complete certainty. Another company is called FireEye, and FireEye has a solution where the traffic coming into a network goes into a created virtual machine just for that purpose. They run that code, that traffic, and if the machine crashes, they block it. If the machine stays up and it's fine, it passes through to the next level of detection. Those are examples of work that needs to be done. So we'll move on to the next challenge. The challenge of mental health care for all. Now, at many points in life, we wonder, 
how am I feeling? How am I going to deal with this situation? Could be anxiety. You could be wondering, am I normal? So with that, what we don't want is we don't want people thinking they're completely alone. And everyone, everyone deserves somebody that they can lean on in life. For a lot of us who choose to live lives that are very mobile, dynamic, maybe we are, get our energy from being alone and are a little bit more introverted. How do we seek that assistance, that mental health? Well, what's amazing is that there are many, many online tools and many tools that we now have available to us. Some of them are named as examples here. In fact, as it says, 19 states require medical health insurance to cover online mental health. That's an amazing breakthrough. That's a turning point. Two companies I want to highlight are MindStrong and Crisis Text Line. MindStrong is a new solution created by a medical doctor who, without, who also has a PhD, which combines your mobile device, the solution itself at the company, and then an entire telepresence of, of therapists who are ready to help. It's a very fascinating solution, and it's part of that wave going forward into a new era of mental health. Crisis Text Line is a free 24-hour service that anyone can use from their phone. It was created as a way that, to provide an, an opportunity for anybody to seek therapy at any time for free. The interesting thing about the anonymous metrics that Crisis Text Line keeps is that there is a demographic that uses Crisis Text Line the most, and that's middle-aged men. That's who uses that service the most. My belief is that it's because of the social stigmas. For a man my age to say openly that I've been to therapy, in some circles, in some cultures, in some communities, I would be looked down upon as perhaps weak. But that's not the case. Seeking help is never weakness. So the last piece I want to talk about is integrity and the challenge of integrity. How does it relate to technology? Well, as you could see with Maya, she demonstrated integrity while being up here on stage. Did she speak about herself earning all those awards? Did she speak about just herself doing all that effort? No. She showed incredible integrity up here on stage by saying it was the team, the team who achieved. That's the challenge of integrity. Doing the right thing is hard. But as we can see, doing it for the story or attempting the impossible is the only thing worth trying. Now, when we're using our technology, are we doing it with integrity? Are we doing it with kindness in our heart? It's Talk Nice Tuesday here at Southport, and that's something to think about. What, do you, what you think and do is what you become, and that is your trajectory, and it begins now. And knowing yourself is about helping others, because if you know yourself, you're being your best self. That's the challenge. So what's the turning point here? Well, the turning point really is realizing that you're already here. You're already in the right spot to make all of the best choices along the way. You should always enjoy your journey. Keep being you and be yourself and use the technology in a way that's positive and healthy. Now, goals are the fuel in the furnace of achievement. Many of the speakers here have had epiphanies and realize what they wanted out of life. And they begin to use the best fuel. They be, begin to use the fuel that's the cleanest and burns the brightest. And that's why I have this pile of wood here. What are you choosing as your goals? And how are you going to achieve them? And what are you burning as your fuel? So as you think about yourself, think about integrity and how you're interacting. Integrity is what you do when no one's looking. I'll say that again. Integrity is what you do when no one is looking. With that, I'd like to summarize. We've covered four challenges in the world of technology and their turning points. We've covered education. We've covered information security and securing devices. We've covered mental health for all. And we've covered integrity. Now. Ego was mentioned in one of the talks earlier, and that is so true. Setting down ego. 
not being drawn by what it is that I've done, I've this, that sort of building that self up, you can help so many others if you set the ego down. And setback equals comeback. Try new things, ask questions. Now, as we think about technology, let's embrace our challenges. Let's lean into the sharp points, embrace the challenge, and challenges make us better. Thank you.